Hello, my and howdy. My name is Gabby, and welcome to Print Futures. Oops. A little bit about me. Um, I'm a senior at UT studying design, like graphic design, but now have a focus in screen printing and letterpress printing. I hold a day job as a graphic designer for a Texas-based sausage company, which is as fun and funny as it sounds and currently hold a resident printmaking position at the UT Design Lab where I get to play with RRK wood type collection. Um, I was in the middle of my first letterpress, letterpress class when I was offered the residency because my professor noticed I was exploring on my own and posting process videos and he said would you like to do that for the RRK uh, Instagram account and I was super thrilled. So what is the RRK or Robert Kelly collection? It's a collection of over 150 American 19th century wood type faces assembled by the noted designer, educator, design educator, collector, and historian Robert Kelly. The collection is now with the University of Texas Design Division and has been expanded by uh, David Shields. My professors, Kevin and Henry, are now managing the collection, hosting events, and teaching related courses. Henry Smith also coordinates the RRK residency. As a graphic designer who's more comfortable designing on a computer screen, this quote from my professor sums up what this experience has taught me. You have to let go of control when working with these types and realize that something weird might happen. It might be great or it might be terrible. And that's how innovation happened. So with that in mind, I had three main goals during my time in the program. One is to accept the unexpected and be okay with making mistakes. Uh, give new life to an old collection by documenting it in new ways, experimenting with techniques and sharing them on social media. And then just letting fellow design students and other people know why they should care about this historic collection like getting them into the lab, recommending letterpress classes, showing them what a physical, what physical letting looks like and having that connect in their brain. Cause when I first saw that, everything just made sense when I had physical things to relate to what I'm seeing in Adobe Illustrator. Like, oh, this is what that means. That's really cool. So the first project at the beginning of my residency, um, I had learned how to do split fountain gradients, but in the spirit, the spirit of experimentation, I was wondering how I could achieve a radial gradient, which is really easy to do in Adobe Illustrator, but like, how do you do it on a press? And so I chose Gothic round, this typeface, because it's just very round and friendly and soft. And I used a basic sponge that we had in this shop and I chopped it up to a variety of sizes and you can use any kind of sponge you like but I found that the smaller the pores the smoother the gradient will be so these little cosmetic sponges are pretty perfect but you can really use any kind of sponge. This is my first iteration it took about 10 minutes but the gradient was not very smooth and it was very goopy. And then this was my fourth attempt, and it took me about 20 minutes to blend back and forth. And I kept a sponge for each color and then just switched back and forth for each one until there was like a visible smooth transition. And then this is the print that was like my 10th try, and I finally got the hang of it. It was very much like blending makeup, and it was very fun but it took a really long time, but the results were really cool and worth it. I regret not taking a photo of the first Goopy print, but you can kind of see it in the back there. And then I revisited this method in February for this Love You print, and I played around with just like adjusting the directions of the gradients. Project Halloween Friends. So early on in my residency, I started to gravitate towards this box of these fantastic ornaments. They have hilarious expressions and personalities of their own. And at this time, Halloween was approaching and I felt like it would be fun to kind of doodle a few costumes on these little guys. We have an online library where students can download scanned prints from the collection. So I started with that 
I took them into my iPad in Procreate and I used a blend mode called Multiply to kind of envision what their costumes would look like using semi-transparent ink. Then I made some photopolymer plates of their costumes and just did the whole thing, sticking them on registration using um, some prints I had made before. And here they are. I think the costumes match their personalities as well as accentuating their natural attributes. And this one is supposed to be a carrot, but some people think it's a beet and that is close enough. Project holiday ornaments. So again, like kind of sticking with that ornament box that I was just really obsessed with. Um, this was around Christmas time and I saw these ornaments and I thought these would make really cute um, snowflakes, but we only have a set of two of each. So then I thought, oh, let me just scan them and bring them into Adobe Illustrator. And I used the repeat radial pattern and it worked pretty perfectly. Then I picked out this frosty blue and printed them on a, like a really nice pale pink paper. And while the ink was still damp, I used a paintbrush to dust on some Pearl X powdered pigment. This one was called Interference Blue. Then I cut them out with an X-Acto pen because I had a lot of free time over the winter break and I popped them onto my Christmas tree. Project Mythical Landscape. What is experimentation without failures? So this same friend from our ornament box who usually prints like this, uh, but I wondered what if I could make this instead? This is something I drew in Illustrator. And in hindsight, I'm not sure why I did it this way, but a lot was learned that day. I painstakingly inked one polymer sheet for all four colors. And in hindsight, each one should have had their own. Then I did the same thing for the original wood block. And the first print of the base colors didn't come out too bad. It was a bit thick and smudgy though. The colors were were good, I think, but then the shapes were like good. And then in the end, there was just too much ink and not enough steps in between to get like a very crisp kind of print. So again, being a graphic designer, I create the majority of my work on my computer and my iPad. So I struggled really hard with imperfections and unpredictability of printmaking when I started this residency. And this particular project kind of felt like, like, oh, this is it. Like, I don't like this feeling <laughs> of it not being perfect. But then it brings me back to the quote I opened with, that you have to let go of control. And I'm reminded that this is the reason that I'm doing this because it pushes me so far out of my comfort zone. And along with the unruly and unpredictable, this is where I find the delightfully unexpected. Thank you for your time and attendance.